Welcome back to another episode of the House Husband Diaries. I am your host, Carter C., as always, have been my whole life. But uh, yeah, today we are talking about the best of the rest in men's tennis. I've already been through uh, Rafael Nadal's case for the greatest player of all time, Roger Federer's case, Novak Djokovic's case, and then obviously uh, the last video on tennis was, uh, was my picks. Roger number one, Rafael Nadal number two in a close race. 2020 could really make a difference in, uh, in the historical standings. Um, and then Novak Djokovic being a distant third. But I thought, you know, in order to kind of finish up the, uh, the, my, my view on tennis, this video series on, on tennis, I would be remiss not to, to try to rank the, the previous generations. I'm not going all the way back to Rod Laver and Roy Emerson, uh, pre-open era, if you will. I, I just don't, I don't think there's any use in that. Um, you, it, it, you just get so far back that um, you, you can't compare to the athletes and the technology of today. So um, I, I don't think it's too, too much of, a, uh, of an issue to look back to the, to the 80s, 90s, 70s um, and say, hey, you know, these are, these are some of the, the best players and how they would fare against Roger Federer or Nadal or Djokovic. Um, you know, I, I don't know that they would hold, hold a candle to them. I mean, when you look at the way, um, you know, working out, supplements, massage therapy, I mean, just all of the things that go along with the technological advances. I just, you know, I mean, I'm not saying those guys aren't great athletes. They wouldn't, with all of that stuff, be at the top of the game. Um, but, you know, everybody has their own view on it. So, um, so really what I did is I, I narrowed it down to four guys. Um, Yvonne Lindell, Jimmy Connors, Pete Sampras, and Bjorn Borg. I already ruined, ruined the, uh, ruined the, the, uh, the order, but, uh, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you my criteria. Um, I wanted to look at their overall body of work, right? Uh, Bjorn Borg, I'm going to start with him, had probably the highest peak of the four guys I just mentioned, but he retired at like age 26. He only won French Opens and, um, and Wimbledon's. Now, he had the most uh, majors but when he retired. And he, he retired at like 26. Like, I mean, he, he had an, an incredibly high peak, but his total wins, his, his, um, you know, his total number of titles, his total weeks as the number one ranked player in the world, it, it's, they're just not there all time. Great. I mean, he his when you look at the history books, he has eleven majors or eleven Grand Slams. Sorry, I know I'm, I keep switching between golf and tennis, um, but he has eleven Grand Slam titles, which was more than anybody until Pete Sampras came along, and then obviously Djokovic, Nadal, and Federer. So that's a big big boon to him. But he had zero hard court titles. That's amazing because the Australian Open and and the U.S. Open, so half half of the Grand Slams are played on hard courts, and he has zero. Of I will say this as a caveat, Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg did not play the Australian Open. Jimmy Connors played it twice, Bjorn Borg played it once. So they did not play it consistently and over the course of their careers. So, you know, seven, eight years, nine years, 10 years, whatever for Borg, and then, um, and then you know, forever for Jimmy Connors. So they, they, they really didn't play that many Australian Opens, hardly any to add to their titles. Um, you know, Borg probably would have won. He lost four U.S. Open titles, so, you know, he probably would have made the finals of the Australian. He probably would have gotten one, let's just be honest, right? You know, somebody would have had a bad day. He would have had a good one. He might would have had 12 or 13. Um, but he just retired too early, and you can't really make a case for greatest of all time if you're not in the top 10 and wins. You know, he's, he's until uh, Nadal and Djokovic, he was number one, in win percentage, so that's great. But you you quit when when you were in your prime. Everybody has a greater winning percentage in their you know twenties than they do. Well, not everybody, right? I mean, Nadal's really bumped his up. But as you get older, if you don't retire at your prime, whatever that age that is, you're you're going to start to lose matches against younger competition that is in better shape. You don't recover as well over the grueling two weeks of a, of a Grand Slam. 
Um, you know, so I feel like that that vastly few. He played like half as many matches as Jimmy Connors and Yvonne Lindell and Roger Federer. So I just, you know, I put him at fourth of the best of the rest simply because he had uh, a much shorter career. And I think that just, I'm, I'm admitting that he had probably the highest peak of any of those guys, but, um, but he just didn't, he didn't have sustained excellence. And when you're talking about the greatest of all time, you're not talking about for any one or two year stretch or three year stretch. You're talking about a career and a career for these guys, if it's 10, 15 years, you know, 20 years, like you, you can't, um, you can't compare somebody who just had a, who had a much shorter half, half the length of a career. Um, so number three, I'm going to go Pete Sampras. Um, you know, he, when he retired, he, he was number one for the most weeks at number one. Um, he's now number two, Roger Federer passed him. He had, he was also number one for the most grand slam titles at 14. So you go, hey, how could you possibly have him as third when he surpassed the number of weeks at number one of the other two guys, Jimmy Connors and Yvonne Lindell, and he surpassed the Grand Slam titles of those two guys. And my big thing when I was looking at this was I, I, when, I, when I was doing this research, Pete Sampras just didn't – his competition just wasn't there. When you look at the major winners of the, of the majors that he didn't win – it's guys that were good at the time for like a year or two, Patrick Rafter, um, you know, whoever. Um, they all have like one or two or three, maybe four majors. I mean, the only guys that you can really say were really good during Sampras' time would be, um, would be Andre Agassi. But Andre Agassi w- would just take time off or not play. Or he just didn't care. It's hard. He, he was being forced to, to play for, for many years. So he, he um, you know, he came back and won – I think Agassi won four or five of his majors after Sampras retired. And Agassi's a year older than Sampras. So Sampras also retired. He had already gotten the most Grand Slams and, and spent the most weeks at number one. So he felt like, hey, my career solidified. But his winning percentage is down, you know, it's like barely in the top 10. His winning percentage is less than Andy Murray's. You know, so how can, I, how can you say that you're the, the greatest of all time or even in the top four or five? If your winning percentage is below somebody who who would be considered the fourth best of this modern era, right? It just his competition, and and I will also say this: Pete Sampras is tied with Bjorn Borg for number of titles at sixty four, right? So Djokovic has more titles, um, uh, uh, Nadal has more titles, and then the next two guys who I who I rank one and two, obviously Yvonne Lindell and Jimmy Connors have more titles. So um, I think total number of titles, just the career body of work and the competition for Sampras and Bjorn Borg are, um, you know, they just, they knock them down a, a notch. So then on number two on my list of best of the rest is Jimmy Connors. So when he retired, he was first with total weeks at number one, first in wins, first in total number of titles, and he was second in win percentage when he retired. So he was like right up there, you know, he's now fifth in weeks at number one and fifth in winning percentage, but he still holds the all time record for wins and most titles. Now his titles record will still most likely, I mean, I'm almost hundred percent sure Federer will not win seven titles in 2020, but Federer should get to 37 or 38 wins, whatever it is he needs to surpass Jimmy Connors record of, of wins. So I think that, has a really strong case between for Jimmy Connors to be the best of the rest. Because Yvonne Lindell, who I have as, as the fourth best player of all time behind the big three now, when he retired, Yvonne Lindell had, had surpassed Jimmy Connors as with the most weeks of number one. He was second in total wins to Jimmy Connors, second to Jimmy Connors in total titles. He was fourth in winning percentage. He's now seventh. He had a lower winning percentage than Jimmy Connors. So you go, well, wait a minute. If he only had a couple more weeks at number one and he had less wins, less titles, and a lower winning percentage, how could he possibly jump Jimmy Connors? And I asked myself the same question, right? Because it doesn't, you know, I'm like, I was, I was looking. So when I, I go back to competition. Jimmy Connors was worked by Bjorn Borg. Period. 
you look at the, the, the titles, if Bjorn Borg hadn't retired, Jimmy Connors would probably have less, um, less titles and he would have less majors. Uh, Jimmy Connors and Yvonne Lindell are tied with eight majors. But Yvonne Lindell started his career and he played Bjorn Borg and Jimmy Connors in Grand Slam finals. He also played John McEnroe, who I would put, you know, down as fifth or sixth on this list. Um, he got the end of those guys' careers, who were all-time greats. But then he also played alongside, at the same time, of Mats Wielander, who has seven majors, Stefan Edberg and Boris Becker, which I both, I think, uh, have six or seven. No, I think Boris Becker has six. Edberg, I think, has six as well. But you're talking about the parity back then, the number of guys that were winning six to seven, eight, nine, well, there, nobody has nine, but, but Bjorg had 11, Connors has eight, Bielander has seven, Edberg and, and Becker have six, and, and McEnroe has eight. I mean, he played against guys that were incredible, that are, that are all-time greats, a number of them, one, two, three, four, five, six guys that all have, you know, six or more majors. Nobody else on this list can say that. So in order for him to get that many wins, have that good of a winning percentage, that many titles against that tough of a group of competitors, I think the competition has to, has to move Yvonne Lindell up just slightly above Jimmy Connors as the fourth best player of all time. Jimmy Connors would be my fifth best. Pete Sampras, six. Bjorn Borg, seven. But obviously, I think Bjorn Borg's, Bjorn Borg's peak and ceiling is somewhere up there with the Djokovic, the Nadal, and the Federer. He, he, was, he had a better peak than anybody else on this list. He just didn't have the career to match. So that's the best of the rest in men's tennis. Thank you for watching. Episode, what is this? I don't even know what day this is going to be scheduled for, but I'm having a blast doing it. Let me know any other sport, any other interesting facts you want to add, comment, let me know. I'd love to uh, do some more research, share some more stuff. My next video is going to be uh, the best of the next generation in, uh, in tennis. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Hope you guys are having a great day. Talk to you soon.